If you're a plant nerd like me, you typically feel like you don't have enough space to get everything that you lust after as a plant. But today, I'm here in this jewel of a little garden on a small lot in the middle of Nashville, and I'm gonna show you how you can have just about everything you might possibly be interested in in a relatively small space when it's designed smart. We're in the garden of Bill Bauckham, who lives in Nashville, and he is a major plant collector. I want to thank you for <laughs> inviting us here today. You're so welcome. And let's talk about some of the things you have. I, I'm interested in this circular, lovely, sort of raised backyard that you have here and the way that these beds are arranged so you can really admire everything that you've got. Well, thank you. There's structure um, with the architecture of the garden, mm -hmm. and then I like to collect plants. So there's a lot of variation within the uh, structure of the garden. Right. Well, you know, people always say you have to plant in big swaths, but when you have a small bed, you don't have to. Not One true. plant is enough. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if you're thoughtful about placement, and you have, I, I love the way everything is very distinct. Let's talk about some of the stuff you have, like this hydrangea here. That's a Haas halo. Okay. It's a, a Annabelle hydrangea relative, but uh, instead of the The globe, dome. Yeah, yeah. It's more of a flat plate or a... Um, what they call a lace cap. That's yeah. right, yeah. Yeah, that's a beautiful plant. And it looks like it's doing well. Mm -hmm. And I'm amazed at this Agastache. That is just, talk about a bee magnet. And butterflies. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I noticed yeah. a ton of butterflies flying around here. Yeah. I have, uh, in my yard, that is the most popular pollination plant of all of the things that I grow. It's a wonderful plant. And I see the little yellow. Melampodium. Mm-hmm. Blackfoot daisy. Oh, Melampodium means blackfoot. seeds every year. Yes, I, I, I've had it kind of get out of control, but it's easy <laughs> to control, just mm -hmm. pulling it up. Yeah. I'm loving this euphorbia stuff you've got. It's Mediterranean. Mm-hmm. Uh, it grows wonderfully in Nashville. In the spring, it'll have a three-foot tall, large um, chartreuse uh, Like euphorbias that, do, yeah. That, that look like eyes that are looking <laughs> at you. Yeah, and then it's, it's seeds. It, it'll live three years, and then it it's does. a short-lived perennial. Right. Yeah. Right. Now all of this stuff likes good drainage, and that I'm seeing this that you're growing, and we don't have Nashville is famous for not having terrific mm -hmm. soil in lots of places, clay mostly. Yeah. So how do you deal with that? Lots and lots of pine finds. So. Okay. So you put down hmm? this. Hmm? which is sometimes you can buy it in, in bags called soil conditioner. That's right, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you just mulch with that. About an inch to an inch and a half every year. Okay, and then you it just rots into the soil. Yeah, right. A and in so doing, improves it? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and is that a fairly rapid improvement, do you think, or is it sort this of? This has been here three years and things are growing. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing, seeing stuff that looks pretty happy, for sure. Herbs and all kinds of, the butterflies in here are amazing. Is that ginger? It is. Mm -hmm. It did not bloom this year, but it's its first year, so I'm hoping that next year it'll have the white blooms and the fragrance of right. that is extraordinary. And that's Hedicium coronarium, the, the white ginger. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And basil. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Thai basil. Thai basil. Uh -huh. That is just lovely. Look at that. You've got the uh, verbena from a, the verbena, the see through verbenariensis, uh -huh, yeah, from Argentina. Yeah, and that does this self sow for you? Oh does, yes. Yeah, it just comes all. Mm -hmm. all. Yeah. Butterflies love that. And so too. does the Thai basil. Really? That's, that's self seeds. Mm -hmm. You know, they always tell you to cut the flowers off, but I don't because look at how the bees love them. Yeah, I, I think we should share. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I see you are an aster lover. This one's Radon's favorite. Ah, yes, the yeah. aromatic aster, they call it. This is native to Middle Tennessee. This bloomed for nearly six weeks last year. Oh, man. My experience is it just covers itself in flowers in October, so much so that you cannot see the foliage. Yes, uh-huh. It's in a beautiful it's blue. Beautiful kind of a periwinkle blue. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't, that's gonna be just so gorgeous. But before this comes into bloom, this is in its glory. This so, blue lobelia. Uh -huh, lobelia syphilitica. Right. Do you know why they call it that? Uh, it's probably a cure. Plant, tr yeah, well, yeah. they thought it was. Yeah. It's, it's not, but, mm -hmm. but uh, the original, the Indians used it as, uh, Native Americans used it as medicine, and white folks thought it was for syphilis. They were all, <laughs> at that time, they were crazy looking for 
it's cures for syphilis. And this is this seeds wonderfully. It's not a pest, but it, it it's it'll it's, seed quite a bit. It's the color is just gorgeous. And uh -huh. this time of year we're we're filming this in very early September. And this is just such a delight to see this and time Marty, of year. Um I'll about Oh, June or so, I'll cut this in half. Yeah, I call that kneecapping stuff. Knee so it doesn't, yeah, so yeah. It, yeah, it's kind of a mafia term for <laughs> cutting back perennials so they don't get too high and plop over. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It delays the blooming maybe a little bit, but not badly. Yeah. And I want to go from that to this glorious thing. This is a gift uh, from um, a friend, Stephen Feltz and Susan Feltz, and it's oh. a, a yucca that's a, I know, so. sort of a, <laughs> yeah. a tree form. Uh huh. Um, and it, it's beautiful in the afternoon watching the sun come through the bloom is just marvelous. Oh, I just love it. And yeah. moths love those at uh -huh. night. Right. Yeah. That beautiful. And uh, that is just gorgeous. How, how tall do you know what variety this is? Or? I do not. Yeah. I do not know. It's pretty spectacular. Yeah. Well, I know this is just the intro to a bunch of cool succulents. Let's go look at them. Bill, tell me about this wonderful, basically succulent desert garden you've built here in Nashville. First off, I see it's a raised berm. Mm -hmm. And what kind of soil did you use? This is basically just fill dirt. Nashville dirt. Uh -huh. And then incorporated into it is up, not quite all of it, but uh, some of it is up to six inches of limestone just like driveway gravel okay that's just incorporated in that makes sense because a lot of desert plants like that higher ph that the limestone would help and, the, and drainage yeah mm -hmm. um i would think that growing these things that i'm seeing in general the challenge is drainage in winter it right? is in nashville these plants don't freeze as much as they drown from clay soil they rot out in the winter they do yeah that's a big problem in nashville mm -hmm. i mean i tell people they say my echinacea didn't come back i'm like i can tell you why right it's not that it you did anything wrong it's that it was a cold wet winter and it didn't have enough drainage around the roots happens to a lot of plants but this is just spectacular and i'm seeing so many great great plants uh, let's talk about some of them like is that a sapphire skies or is that yucca a... rostrata yes. sapphire skies uh, mm -hmm is so beautiful this beautiful column and then it's almost like a <laughs> starburst or uh -huh. something yeah and it, that gorgeous sort of steely blue green color oh, i love it yeah. yeah yeah and needless to say all of these things are evergreen it is yeah 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 so you get and if we do get snow these are all hardy obviously right, right. if we get snow it looks so great on those it things. does uh-huh so, and let's talk about some of these smaller things. Like I see you've got, is this Hesperallo? It is, uh-huh. That's a Mangave mammoth. Now, Mangave is a cross between, is it a? Manfreda and, and Agave. And Agave. Most okay. are not hardy, but that one is. Okay, cool. Let's, just for educational purposes, what is the difference between a yucca and an Agave and I see you've got a Sotol, a Dasilirian over mm -hmm. here, which is the other big spiny thing. Right. So how would you describe the difference? Three different genus. Mm -hmm. Yuccas are usually more spiny and more upright. So the agave has a, a flatter leaf, more rigid, and then there's a, a large um, pena, a large um, amount of, of um, plant underneath the ground that's what they make tequila and mezcal from a huge rootstock under huge, there huge huge yeah. yeah water storage bigger than a basketball yeah wow right wow that's pretty amazing <laughs> and agaves have these ferocious spines right right i mean they're all spiny but agave i think particular take, so take, take the cake yeah. with spines and they also have these big broad flat fleshy leaves whereas it seems like yuccas can have big leaves but they're not as more flexible know, they're more flexible and then we've got the Dasilirian over here, which is another grassy leaved right there. Uh -huh. That's beautiful with the sawtooth uh -huh. edging. And that also has a large bulb. It bloomed this year. It, the, the bloom earlier in the year was um, beautiful. It's the color of corn, a bright yellow. God, that must have been beautiful against mm -hmm. that wall. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. 
That is, and you can see that has no spines on the tips to speak of, but these really fine sawtooth edges on the grassy foliage. Is that when you want to be careful with weeding around? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I would say of most of these yeah, things. Right. And you've got, uh, obviously, a prickly pear. Uh -huh. Another mangave. Mm -hmm. And I uh, love these spotty ones. Right. With the, the delightful. And that came through the winter just fine. Oh, that's great. And California poppies coming in. I know they, mm -hmm. they definitely want great drainage, so you've got it here. And these agaves, the, these big ones, the, the variety to get for our area is agave ovatifolia. Ova, which means? O-V-A-T, ovata yeah, folia. which means oval foliage. <laughs> also known as the whale tongue agave. I was gonna say that, yeah. Yeah, but they grow, that's the best one. And look at that gorgeous color. It's almost powder mm -hmm. blue. Right. It's just lovely. And obviously they're happy as anything here. And tell me about the snapdragon. It's a Spanish variety. Look uh, at that. And it likes desert, uh, desert climate, another euphorbia, a mercinites. Mm-hmm, right. Um, that snapdragon is amazing. Does it bloom all summer? All summer long. And this, I don't water this. Okay. This all just takes care of itself. Whatever nature right. sends, yeah. This plant right here this is- This little guy. Digitalis, that's a foxglove. Yeah. Also Spanish. Um, cool. That likes drought, heat, full sun, baking. Wow. Excellent. That, it's just fascinating to me how you've done this. This is just a really wonderful way to deal with it. it and it's so great against the kind of the very architectural, you know, graphic almost design of your house. We have nighting at night, so this all you know, kind of glows at night. So that's yeah, great. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. I'm looking at what you tell me is a hardy fuchsia. It, it, tell me how you keep this going. This is apparently a hardy variety. I believe it's Japanese. It's called Santa Hanf, uh, which is sort Trips of a off the tongue. German sounding name for yeah. a Japanese plant. Uh, but it's bloomed all summer long. Wow. No maintenance. How big does it get? I'm guessing that it gets about two feet tall, but that's, that's a guess. Is this one, how long have you had it? One year, uh, less than one year. Uh, okay. Planted it about uh, three to four months ago. Okay, so it hasn't been through a winter. So no. we're gonna, it's, it's in a very sheltered spot though. The other amazing thing about this is that I've always thought of fuchsias as being not tolerant of heat. Yeah. And this one has not batted an eye in this uh, really awful summer. That is amazing and we have had a blast furnace of a summer. That is truly amazing because fuchsias, you know, they're mm -hmm. from Chile and often altitudinal Chile. Right. So they like cool, foggy, moist. That looks great for early September. <laughs> I'm interested to know how it gets through the winter. But that's a beautiful thing. I bet the hummingbirds love it. I love this atrium. It's like this focal point of your whole house and it sits smack in the middle, very Roman. <laughs> <laughs> you must enjoy this year round. Very much it uh, snowed here in the winter. So we had snow uh, inside the house. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. What a treat. Yeah. So everything in here is hardy, obviously. Inside the house, that's right. Right. And you've got some, some native wildlings. I see asplenium, the little mm -hmm. uh, uh, ebony spleenwort there. That's just beautiful. Holly fern. Mm -hmm. Gingers. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. see gingers, lovely. And this is just such an incredibly calming space to organize your house around. It's really beautiful. This, this species here is very lush. I mean, it's, it'll get up to six, six inches deep. Oh, that's nice. And as it spreads and fills, it's just gonna right. get greener and greener and greener. How many kinds of moss have you got in here? Four or five. Okay, mm -hmm. How did, where did you get them? Did you collect them? Or From I, mountain moss. Okay, you uh, can In buy North them. Carolina, in Brevard, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Annie Martin, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So, and it's obviously taken off really well for you. Literally, well, not quite literally, almost no maintenance. I'll weed twice a year and then sometimes uh, maple seeds will fly in here yeah and yeah. I'll, I'll pick them up but mostly what i'm seeing are baby ferns right right that are this they're sporing mm -hmm. and, and spreading right. which isn't a bad thing at all right <laughs> how lovely so obviously you're gonna selectively weed or uh, place those as sure. you want to this is just charming I just want to thank you so much for sharing all this with well, us. Well, thank it's you. Been wonderful to see your, your lovely place. Oh, my pleasure. 
For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.